Okay, this is the second part of a three-part tutorial on modeling and rigging a basic tentacle in 3ds Max. Um, here we'll be basically unwrapping this um, low-res tentacle in order to map the high-res tentacle, which you should have from the previous lesson, onto it and get the uh, the normal ma normal map of the bubble detail. So let's start by selecting the low-res what we want is to add a unwrap UVW modifier on there. If we go into edit, you can see the default view is a uh, default unwrap is basically a side side projection, completely dreadful, useless, whatever. Um, you want to go down to edit seams, and if we zoom in on this, we're gonna we're trying to work out which we want as a center seam. I think this one, if all I'm doing is uh, left clicking on the lines, you don't need to use any uh, keyboard with this, it's just the uh, left click. Though if you accidentally select a line like that, you can hold down Alt and click it to get rid of it. That's quite good. Um, kind of zooming out, it's kind of difficult to see with this blue that I've chosen. Um, that's that one. That one. just working our way outwards. It's good to choose the center point first because then you can um, kind of see where it's going to end up. It's, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, almost done. Can get a decent view. Okay, that's basically the entire loop there. And, uh, tip the base. So we can unclick it seems and in order to do a pelt map we're going to actually have to select a particular face. Face. Um, so you know if it was uh, a head that was set you were doing unwrapping separately from the body you know you kind of select it or whatever um here we want the whole thing so if you go to edit there's a select all apparently it's a shortcut of control a as well you never use that but there it is then if you click on pelt you can see uh you've got if i move these aside you can see that um that scene that we created has actually become a green scene now so it's been set and if we click on a pelt, you can see how it's uh, unwrapping it all. My only problem is like up here, we've got some very, very messy topology. So if we press reset on that, and we want to actually select this loop and make it uh, far bigger. So go down to pelt options, there's an option to select stretcher. And then if you go to scale, you can scale this out, Let's just make it enormous. Um, and now if we start pelt, you can see it when I zoom in on that end, absolutely beautiful. So we commit to that. Still got uh, our uh, scale tool selected, which is convenient because we want to scale this down to fit in that little box down there. That's it. Okay, a bit more than that. And I like to straighten it up. It's not really needed here because uh, you know it's the normal map won't really care if it's straight or not. But it's a good practice to get into for uh, if you want to create textures that have got a particular repeating pattern or whatever. So that's basically fine. So we can collapse the UV. That's basically our UV and done. So that's the first part. So now if we select this high poly version and drag it over so it's basically protruding through, that looks pretty right. So the uh, two objects are overlapping in space can then select the low poly one and press uh, zero on the and not on the number keypad it's um, it's zero above the letters on the keypad on the keyboard sorry um, the le uh, I assume that the um, the zero on the number keypad does something different I've never found it to do anything but um, basically you're bringing up this render to texture dialog box very useful um, what you've got here, uh, most of the options you can basically leave on the defaults. This is all fine. 
this uh, object's to bake. You've obviously got lofts 01, that's the object that we're selecting. This is all fine. Um, you want to tick the projection mapping and pick the object from the scene, which is loft 02. If you had uh, several objects in the scene, then there'd be a great long list here and it'd be quite important that you name the, um, the high res model that you're using. But as soon as there's only one in the scene, we know which one it is. Absolutely fine. Um, immediately it adds a projection uh, modifier to your low res model and what we ideally want is this projection modifier to be quite uniform because this uh, this cage that it produces is what actually beams the um, the rays to toward the um, the surface of the high res model and creates your normal map so I think in this case you know we've um, it's probably worked out on the basis that um, the bubbles are here and the backs are thin, but it's a good practice to actually have quite a nice uniform cage and frankly this is hideous so if we press uh, there's a drop down here on the for cage and we want to press reset and then on push amount you want to scale that up so it's protruding out by a, a uniform amount about that much that should be fine um, so that's absolutely fine back to the uh, render to texture box we've got a very important section here ma mapping coordinates and it says use existing channel and channel one if it doesn't say that, it should be set to that. Very uh, anything else will uh, produce a uh, completely useless result, completely against what you want. Um, usually, if it's your own computer, that should be fine. But sometimes, if you're using somebody a uh, college computer or something, the settings might be different. So just ensure that it's use existing channel or channel one. The output box, we need to uh, add something in here because this is what it's actually going to um, output as a, as a texture. So you can create alpha maps, you can produce, um, oh, that's strange. Normally it has a um, ambient occlusion map, but for some reason it's missing. Um, but, oh, uh, possibly, I think I changed shader to scanline. I think uh, maybe it needs uh, the mental ray to do ambient occlusion. Uh, so it's not a concern for now, but um, normals map, that's fine. And uh, the default is 256 by 256, which is ridiculously tiny. I always like to do it on the highest value possible. Um, the uh, default on the file is often a, uh, a targa, which is a horrible file type. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's an enormous file type. If you're looking to put this into a game, you want something like a PNG. Um, call it something meaningful like um, you know tentacles normals um, dot png it's all fine um, that's basically it there's nothing else we need to change there we can just press render down the bottom there and it's going to do a quick scan line uh, render for you there the one underneath was a mental ray which took forever but scan line is absolutely fine it really doesn't matter which renderer you're using and also don't be concerned here that this looks like a um, uh, looks like a render and not a normal map when you actually go into your file structure and look for your um, tentacles. Um, I hope that's today's one. Um, must be that one. That looks like it. The um, you'll find that the actual file is is a normal even though it looks like a normal render there absolutely normal it always does that so that's that process done close that this projection thing we no longer need you can delete it um, we can move the high res version out of the way over to there find the low res version what it's done for now is it's plugged the uh, which you might be right let me just try this viewport lighting and sh uh, view uh, show materials in viewport as hardware display no it really doesn't like it that's um i think it its default is kind of um plug in the uh, normal map into the diffuse or something you know i mean that's why it's actually changed the color and yeah horrible so just uh we just add a material to it um that might be right um that might be an old map that's yeah it's probably best to start with new ring so uh i'll sort of that later but just add in any tech, uh, just add the default material to your object. S uh, ooh, I can't scroll down because, yeah. S uh, find maps, bump, tick that, raise that to 100. Click on the map. Uh, you don't want bitmap for now, you want normal bump. And then when you choose the top box here, then you want bitmap. 
and you're going to have to go to uh, let me find yeah on users my documents there's a new tentacle tentacle file this one damn I've got a lot of these uh, shows how many to these tutorials I've done that one that one's the new one for today go to parent go up a level and all that um, let's see if we can get this to display uh, show material viewpoint the hardware display with maps yeah there it is that looks like a normal map um, it's obviously not reacting to light yet so we want to raise the spec on it and also I like to plug in a diffuse if I use the picker and make it easy pick that colour yeah Oh, so I can't uh, press F4 to get rid of the wires, I'm afraid, because it's the uh, the recorder's using F4 for some reason. That's not a problem. Um, but you can see as I move around the object, the actual bubbles are reacting to the light. Obviously, if you view it from the side, it's not going to look so, it looks so impressive. But if uh, if you're not using a recorder, you do actually have the option to turn off this wireframe, and then you can actually see all of the bubbles. It'll look really nice that's basically it that's uh that's it for this stage uh the next stage will be uh putting a rig through this and animating it but for now that's basically it